So we can get our Bibles out. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. If you need to notice, just hold your hand up. If you would, Acts chapter 4. Believe it or not, another in the series of But by Prayer. Uh, you thought I was done. So did I. But it just doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. Acts chapter 4. But by prayer. Looking tonight at the prayer for boldness. The prayer for boldness. Going along with our theme, that all may know. That all may know. I know I just had you be seated, but I'm going to ask you to stand, if you can, one more time. So if you get one of those fibbit things or whatever's on your wrist that tells you exercise, that counts. All right? So you got that exercise in. Nobody can tell you didn't exercise. Down and up. That all may know the prayer for boldness. Acts chapter 4, verse number 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas the, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name, have ye done this? Verse number 18. And they called them, and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God? Judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all the men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old, upon whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. Thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the people of Israel have gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thy hand to heal that the signs and wonders may be done by the, name, by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Father, help us tonight. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimony, the time of prayer. But Father, I ask you to help us tonight to look to our own prayer life, look in our own church, that we might glean from tonight this prayer for boldness. Lord, we need boldness. We need the empowering. We need a direction. We need that stirring that only you can. So, Holy Spirit, speak to us tonight. Thank you for these good folks who have taken some time in the middle of the week to gather as your people in your house, to hear from you, to lift up some prayers, to encourage one another. But, God, speak to us, God, please, tonight in a special way that we might leave here different than when we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Look again, if you would, please, verse 29. They're praying there after the apostles have been challenged not to speak or teach in the name and threatened. But in verse 29, as they pray, they said, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all, what's the word, class? Boldness they may speak thy word. Notice at the end of verse 31. And they spake the word of God with what, class? Boldness. With what? 
boldness. We're looking tonight at the prayer for boldness. The prayer for boldness. Our theme, as we know, is uh, for the next 12 months is that all may know. And the way they're going to know is when we go out and tell them. The way they're going to know is when we hand out the tracts. The way we, they're going to know is through broadcast, whatever, but getting the word out. And as you and I go out, we must have that same spirit. We must have that same heart that we ask God for boldness to go. There's a lot of things that will tend to quench our boldness. Our own national, uh, natural uh, timidity, a little negative look, some words spoken against us. Just you name the list that goes on of why we will not speak out. But we find here the folks praying for boldness. Praying that God would give them the boldness to speak. So we think about the early church and the explosion of the early church. We know in, in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 folks were saved. Here we find in the early part of chapter 4, 5,000 plus were saved. So the church is exploding. And why is it exploding was because the people had a heart that all the world may know. That they would go out as God commanded them to their Jerusalem, their Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. And so we've got our Jerusalem, we've got our Samaria, and we've got the same Challenge from God to get the word out that all may know. We need a, a heart and mind reset on what church is about. Yeah. I mean, it's really an odd thing in today's society that churches, most churches are not viewed or not even thought, even the churches themselves don't focus on getting the gospel out. It was so much in the community events, and nothing wrong with community events that gets the gospel out. Right. Not, we're, we're involved in so many things about reaching the poor, and we should reach the poor. Amen? Yeah. But we reach the poor with the gospel. So we have tend to have forgotten that God would have His people be on fire to be militant, and we're not talking about being belligerent, we're talking about being militant. In other words, organized and focused on getting the gospel out as a soul-winning church. In Acts chapter 4, we see that explosion that went on as these people were saved. So what happened? How did they go forward? How did they move forward? Well, they had boldness and a desire to preach the gospel to every creature so that all may know. And we find in this passage a prayer for boldness to preach the gospel. By the way, prayer changes things. Prayer moves God. Prayer changes us. And so I'm asking us tonight to make sure that we put on our prayer list that we be bold in getting the gospel out. I, I, I know the nature of us is not to do that. The nature of us is to be quiet. But when we see Christ face to face, we'll wish we'd been more bold in getting the gospel out. So tonight we're looking at this prayer for boldness in soul winning. This prayer for boldness in speaking the word of God. So we look at it tonight, some very simple thoughts, but let God speak to us that we as a church, Lighthouse Baptist Church, we would have that boldness, but also we would learn to pray for that boldness. So notice, first of all, as we look at this simple story, the simple event, we find, first of all, the, pre the people of the prayer for boldness. The people of the prayer for boldness. These folks were not unique people they were praying for boldness they were not uh, theologians they were not folks that were uh, specially trained they were just people that had gotten saved folks from all walks of life from all vocations just a whole group of people thousands of people that had gotten together because they were saved and now were focused and praying to God to give them boldness to preach the word but they did have some things in common notice first of all they had a habit of prayer it was a habit of prayer. We need to make prayer a habit. It needs to be common. Flip back to chapter 3, if you would, in verse number 1, which started this whole thing, uh, the persecution, the man that was healed, and the threatenings, and the, which led up to a prayer of boldness. But notice they had a habit of prayer. Chapter 3, verse number 1. Now, when Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of what class? prayer. It was a time of prayer. It was time for them to go. They had a habit of prayer being the ninth hour. Notice, first of all, it was a personal habit. A personal habit. Peter and John, that's where they went. 
they were going because it was the time of prayer. It was the time that they'd been used to praying. We know that they were saved now. They weren't part of the, the Jewish system. But still, they said, you know, it's just time to pray. They had this habit of prayer, a personal habit. They said, it's time to pray. I hope you have a personal habit for time to pray. I hope that when, if you miss that or time goes by and you say, oh, I missed my prayer time, or I don't want to miss my prayer time, or it's my time of prayer. I hope it's a personal habit of prayer. Yeah, prayer has to be more than a habit, but it's good to have a habit of prayer. It's good to have this is where I pray, this is when I pray, this is part of my life, our Christian life. Jesus had habits of prayer. We know that he prayed regularly, he prayed through the night, but when Judas went to betray him, Remember, he said, I know where he's going to be because he goes there often to pray. So even Judas knew Jesus had some habits of prayer. So we find they had a habit of prayer, personal habit of prayer. I hope you have that. If not, let's get it in place. Because, see, we're not going to be focused on praying for boldness if we're not praying. We will not be effective in our prayer for boldness if we're not praying. So we find it was a very personal habit of prayer. It was a practice habit of prayer. They said it was the ninth hour. It was the hour of prayer. I mean, that's just something they did. Every day, the every hour came. So let's practice the habit of prayer, knowing when we're going to pray, where we're going to pray. You know, we ought to pray all the time. We ought to be spontaneous in prayer, but we need to have those habits of prayer. So these folks had a habit of prayer. It was a personal habit. It was a practice habit. And they had a place for their habit. They went to the temple. Remember, Jesus said, as he chased them out, he says, his house was supposed to be called a house of what? Prayer. Not a, ha not a house of buffet. There was nothing wrong with eating in the house of God, all right? We're going to be eating in heaven. But the idea is a house of prayer. We need to be a place of prayer, people of prayer, a habit of prayer. We have prayer time before the Wednesday night service at 6.30. Let me encourage you to start doing that, a place for the men and a place for the lady. On Sunday nights before the evening service at, at 5.30, we have a time of prayer. Let's be a church of prayer and pray for God to give us boldness to go. And so we find that it's a place of their habit. So it was... A people that had a habit of prayer. It was just part of it. As you read through there, they often met together and prayed. So they had a habit of prayer. Number two, listen, they had a heart of prayer. They had a heart for prayer. So it's really easy for us to talk about it. It's another thing not for us to do it. It's one thing to say that we want to do it. It's another thing to have a heart to do it. In fact, look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 24. And when they heard that, when they heard what? That they had been threatened, and they told not to teach anymore in the name of Jesus, they're not to proclaim Jesus, they're not supposed to witness, and they've been threatened not to do so. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. They had a heart for prayer. In other words, their immediate response was, let's call Christian Law Association and see what our attorneys say. No, no. Uh, well, let's get together and let's write a protest. Let's get some letters. We'll write the mayor and say, no. Their immediate response was prayer. See, they had a heart for prayer. How many times is our, our immediate response, both good and bad, to pray? To say, let's go to the Lord about it. Let's thank the Lord for it. Let's ask God's wisdom for it. Let's ask God to intervene. Let's ask God to give me the right kind of spirit about this. But no, that's not what we normally do. We normally lay out what we want to do. Are we going to talk to somebody? We're going to get on the phone call. We'll put it on Facebook. We'll Twitter about it. Instead, it's going to God. They had a heart for prayer. So let's make sure that we have a habit of prayer, but we have a heart for prayer. The fact is we're constantly in prayer, prayer, a spirit of prayer, dealing with God. So we find the people of the prayer for boldness, they were people of prayer. How's our prayer life? I've been preaching a long time now on this series, but by prayer. How's your prayer life? Has it changed any? Has it lengthened any? Has it been strengthened any? Have you been focused on it anymore? If not, we don't have a heart for prayer. So we find here the prayer for boldness. There's a people. All different kinds, but they are people of prayer. Secondly, we find not just the people of prayer for boldness, 
But also we see the prompting for the prayer for boldness. The prompting for the prayer for boldness. I mean, why in the world would they pray for boldness? What brought this on? I mean, we can have times of prayer, and we do, but we pray about sickness. We pray about finances. We pray about special events coming up. We pray about so many things. But do we pray for boldness? Boldness. That God would use us to be bold to speak when He wants to. So what prompted their prayer for boldness? They prayed to God to give them boldness. What prompted this? What stirred their hearts for this desire? What gave them this unction? What gave them this request to, for God to give them boldness? What was it? Maybe we can put it in our own lives that we can be people of boldness and we can ask God for boldness. Notice, first of all, it was bold preaching. Bold preaching prompted them to pray for boldness. Again, Acts chapter 3, verse number 11. If you flip back over there. So they healed this lame man there at the prayer of time. And it says in verse number 11, And as the, prayer man, as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Pe Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this lame to walk, this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and our fathers began to preach and, to, and be preach Jesus Christ unto them. It was a bold preaching. Look at chapter 4, verse number 7. So now they've been arrested. The next morning they brought them and brought them right into the middle and sat them down. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, of what power or by what name have you done this? And Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of Israel and people, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, but by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him let this man stand here before you whole. And he began to preach Jesus Christ. It was bold preaching, bold preaching that stirred them to ask for more boldness. By the way, boldness begets boldness. You listen to what I said? Boldness begets boldness. If you've never invited somebody to church, you start inviting people to church, guess what? You'll get bolder in inviting people to church. If you've never handed anybody a gospel track and say, read that about how to get to heaven, when you start doing that, you'll become more bold in doing so. The fears begin to wane, the fears begin to go down, and boldness begets boldness. So you say, I've never knocked a door. Start knocking doors. I've never witnessed anybody. Start witnessing. Boldness begets boldness. So as they began to be bold in preaching, they said, God, give us more boldness. By the way, it also is contagious. Yeah. It's contagious. When you go with somebody as the silent partner, when you start seeing somebody else witness, it makes you bold. Maybe you're in the workplace, you've seen that. There's a Christian, maybe in the workplace, they begin to witness, and they begin to read their Bible, they begin to, to talk about the things of God. And it gives you boldness then also. So maybe in your family or maybe in your workplace, people are waiting for you to take that place. Boldness begets boldness. As the gate began to preach, they began to ask for that. So bold preaching. Not only boldness begets boldness, but great truths beget great boldness. Great truths automatically beget great boldness. Chapter 4, verse number 12. As he's preaching there, he brings this great truth. Verse number 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. We use this verse all the time, but he is there talking to these folks that are threatening them, that are persecuting them. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only way. And people must be saved. If they're not saved, they go to hell. If you're not saved, you're going to go to hell. I'm glad I'm saved and on the way to heaven because Jesus Christ saved me, not because of what I did. And what a great truth that Jesus is the only way. That there is a hell, there is a heaven, and the only way is by Jesus Christ. And that great truth ought to give us boldness in speaking to people. Because it is a great truth, it is the only truth, and that ought to give us a great boldness. 
That's why in 2 Corinthians 5.11 it says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing the great truth, knowing about hell, knowing about heaven, knowing about Jesus, his life, death, and burial, and resurrection, that great truth ought to make us pray for boldness. Bold preaching. Boldness beget boldness and great truth. When we realize what great truth we hold, begets great boldness. So the prompting of this prayer, bold preaching. Prompting of this prayer, number two, blatant persecution. Blatant persecution. Verse 18 of chapter 4. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. It says, don't you mention His name. Don't you talk about Jesus. Don't you dare speak about Him. Don't tell people about Him. Verse 19, But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Boy, just persecution. ought to prompt us to pray for more boldness. Because we'll, it reminds us we're in the battle. It reminds us that the world is not excited about our message, but they need the message. And so this, this persecution that we may experience, the persecution you may experience, or as it gets farther and closer and closer to the end times, the persecution we may experience, that ought to stir us to pray for more boldness. Instead of getting quieter, we ought to say, God, give me more boldness. God, instead of letting me just waste away, instead of letting me just crumple up in the corner and just be quiet, God, give me more boldness. Again, not being belligerent, not being obnoxious, but being bold to teach about Jesus Christ. What prompted their prayer? Because notice what it says. Verse 24, verse 23, being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and elders and said unto them, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. When they heard about the persecution, when they heard about the threats, they didn't say, God, just keep us safe. They said, no, give us boldness. They said, God, help me learn to be quite careful with my mouth. They said, no, give me boldness. Oh, we need that boldness we have. So we find the people of the prayer of boldness. We find the prompting for the prayer of boldness. Very quickly, notice the particulars of the prayer of boldness. The particular prayer as they prayed, what was necessary for it. Notice, are you still with me tonight? I know I'm going fast, but we've got to have this idea that, God, we've got to be bold. A prayer for the Lord to help us, each one, to be bold in our witnessing. Notice the particulars of the prayer. First of all, these people, they had unity. They had unity. Look at verse 23. By the way, from Sunday we talked about that. On Vision Sunday we saw in our text verse, the key is unity. The key is unity. We saw in the text that we on Vision Sunday, the means was a shared glory. Jesus said, I shared my glory with him. Wow. Boy, there's the means, there's the power. We saw the movement was a shared vision. He said, Jesus said, as they sent me, I sent them. The manners was a, was a shared presence, him in us all the time. And then the motive was a shared love. But notice we find this unity here as they prayed. The particulars of the prayer for boldness was they had unity. Look at verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. There's unity. They said they went to their own company. They went to their own crowd. They didn't run home to mama. They went to their own company. They just didn't go to the workplace. They went to their own company. So I have to ask the question for each of us. Is Lighthouse Baptist Church our own company. Is this our people?
I long for all attenders of Lighthouse Baptist Church to say, that's my people. That's, a, that's my own company. I mentioned before, there's an old, old sermon. That's my crowd. That's my crowd. Him singing bunch. That's my crowd. Bible preaching people. That's my crowd. Praying people. That's my crowd. And so they went to their own company. So when they were released, they went to their own company. And that own company, as they got together, they prayed for boldness. And so we find there was a unity, their own company. I long for all members and all attenders of Lighthouse Baptist Church. Then I say, well, that's just the church or that's a church. No, it's my church. It's my people. It's my company. Because the only way we're going to accomplish what God wants us to, that all the, all the people may know, is because of unity. And it just becomes our company our company so if the world is our own company we're in trouble if the nightclubbers is that what they call them nowadays what do they call them? clubbers I'm not accusing you I'm saying you probably heard people talk about it. what do they call those people now nightclub what do they call them clubbers partiers you're not that spiritual, all right? I know. You at least know the term. I don't, I don't know. We'll call them clubbers. So, well, the clubbers, that's my crowd. Then you're in trouble. Church ought to be our own crowd, our own company. Boy, the, so when you think about your own company, your own crowd, it's got to be God's people. And so with these people, they had this unity, this unity as they prayed for boldness because they had the unity because it was their own company. Also unity because it was in one accord. One accord. Look what it says in verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They had the same prayers, the same prayer requests. They were all on the same page. They all had the same purpose. They all had the same doctrine. They all had the same standards. They all had, we've got to be this one accord. Amen? Amen. So instead of, when we look at our own company, we're all together, and you're here tonight on a Wednesday night, and praise God for that. I just wish everybody on Sunday morning would be here on Wednesday night and on Sunday night. Why? Because it was their own company and praying for the same focus, the same purpose, the same desire, the same direction, the same power of God, praying for the same boldness to go, but we would have the same desire. So when you say, well, I, you know, I'm not sure I would really go along with the church on that. You need to find out why you're not going along with the church on that and find out if there's maybe a reason why the church is going a certain direction or why the Bible teaches us or why the preacher believes a certain thing about the Bible. And say, you know, I want to know why and so that I have him on the same, purpose, same page and same purpose, same direction and same standards. Amen. Because we've got to have this unity as we pray for boldness together. And so we find that this unity, that it was their own company. It was one accord. So they had unity. They had unity. The particulars of this people, the particulars of the prayer, they had unity. But not only did they have unity, they had understanding. Understanding. I say, preacher, what did they understand? Look at verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. Thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is that in them is. They had understanding, first of all, of their source of their power. They had understanding. They knew where their power was going to come from. Power came from God. Aren't you glad we serve a God with all power? I mean, he made everything. If he can just speak and all the galaxies were there, if he can just speak with his word and all the universe was there from the from the beautiful galaxies we see with the telescopes now down to the little DNA and the, and the atoms and all the things that are trying to figure out what makes up even the parts of the atom we serve that kind of God I think that kind of God as we pray God give us boldness we can figure out he can give us boldness if we can pray to that kind of God, say, God, we want your will in our life because you sent your son to die on the cross to pay the sin debt. He was buried and rose again so that people can be saved. And now you tell us to go out. I think I can have boldness that you're going to take care of me and that you've got the best plan for me. They understood the source of the power. Number two, they understood the source of their problems. Look at verse 25. 
See, they knew they had to have boldness, and they knew there was persecution. They knew they had some enemies out there, but they knew the source of their problems. Verse 25, Who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, Why did the heathen rage? And the people imagine vain things. They knew the source of their problems. Verse 26, The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. And of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. They knew the source of their problems. Raging heathens. By the way, you don't have to go out and tell people, you're a heathen. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Be bold, but don't be obnoxious. You heathen. But God says, no, it's going to be the heathen are raging. The heathen crying out. The lost. The unsaved. Those that are just in their natural flesh who do not have the Holy Spirit. The heathen are raging. They understood that this persecution wasn't coming just from just anywhere. It's coming from the heathen, the lost. And from vain persons. The empty persons. But here's the key, listen. The key was they knew their problem was not against them, but against Christ. The raging heathen and the vain persons, they couldn't take it personally. It was against Christ. Notice what it says. Verse 25, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against us. Is that what it says? No. Against who? The Lord and against his Christ. Of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed. So they realized the battle, the hatred wasn't really against them. It was against the Lord. The hatred, the raging of the heathen wasn't against them and against their church and against their people. But that's where it was manifested. They understand the man. The problem is it's against God. It's the battle from the devil against God. The devil against Christ. It's against the good and against the evil. It's against this whole thing. And so we, they couldn't take it personally. That's, they prayed for boldness. Why? Because they don't really hate us. Jesus said they're going to hate you. Yeah, but only because they hated me first. He said, they're going to hate you, they're going to persecute you because they persecuted me. So when we go out and people get up, maybe a little upset, or people begin to attack, or people begin to criticize, don't take it personal, it's against God that they're really raging. So they knew, they had understanding, they understood as they prayed for boldness, they had unity, yes, but they had understanding also that the problems came from the heathen and the vain persons, but it really wasn't against them, it was against Christ. So they had understanding of the source of their power. Well, as we pray for boldness, we need that understanding. The power is going to come from God. The source of our problem is not against us, it's against Christ. But notice very quickly, this will help. They had understanding of the sovereignty of providence. The sovereignty of providence. Look at verse number 8. Let's back to verse 27, rather. For of the truth against thy holy child Jesus whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, comma, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. In other words, even Pontius Pilate and Herod and the Gentiles and the Jews that cried out, crucify him. It was done by the hand and counsel of God. Even the persecution was part of the plan. Remember, as they got persecuted, they were spread throughout, and the gospel went out all around the world because of the persecution. Even the sovereignty of providence, the cross, the tomb, and even the persecution was part of the plan 
of God. So they could pray for boldness because they say, we understand your plan, God. We understand your power. It was by your counsel that you allowed Pilate to do what he did. It was by your hand that you allowed Herod to do what he did. It was by your hand that allowed them to crucify Christ and he was buried and rose again. Aren't you glad we've got a God who's in control? And he's got that plan. They understood the sovereignty of God. So what, but you understand, preacher, if I'm bold, I'll get persecuted. No, but that's the sovereignty of God. If he wants persecution, I'm not going to go out and look for it. I just need to be bold so God can do what he wants to do. So the sovereignty of the providence, the power of God, what an exciting God we serve. It was his hand. That's why when sometimes people say, well, the Jews crucified Christ. No, God crucified Christ. He just used the Jews. If it wasn't going to be the Jews, it would have been somebody else. Hello? Don't let people say, well, the Christians always think Jews are Christ killers. No, we were the Christ killers. He died for our sins on purpose at the counsel of God. So these people praying the particulars for the boldness, they had understanding. They had unity, like we must have, but they had understanding. Very quickly, notice the product of the prayer for boldness. As they began to pray for boldness and unity, understanding it was in the will of God and understanding about where their problems were really coming from, notice the product of the prayer for boldness. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, number one, the place was shaken. Say, so what happened? There was a shaking. There was a shaking going. Talk to me, class. There was a what, class? A shake. Things got shaken, shaken up. Things begin to shake. Things begin to move. Things begin to happen. Things begin to, to move around them as the power of God moves. I got news for you. Our church needs some shaking up. I'm not being critical. I'm just saying we can look around and we can tell we need some shaking in the church. On a Wednesday night, on a Sunday night, on a Sunday morning, we need the power of God. To man there was a shaking going on. I'm glad God can still shake things up. But see, he shook in response to a prayer for boldness. Not a prayer for more money. Not a prayer for better health. Not a prayer for nice spirit or nice people. Though all those things are fine to pray about, they prayed for boldness to get the gospel out and God began to shake. Oh, there was a shaking. Number two, there was a filling. Verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place were, was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all, what class? Filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a filling going on. You'd be surprised how much God wants you to get the gospel out, how much He wants us to be bold. He said, I'll give you the filling of the Spirit to do what, you want, what, I, what I want you to do. There was a filling, and then there was a speaking. It was a speaking. Verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Oh, an answer to prayer. They said, God, give us boldness. And he said, okay. And he shook things up. He filled with the Spirit, and they spake the word with boldness. A prayer for boldness that all may know. How's your prayer life? How's our prayer life? Number one, do you know? Number two, do we share? Number three, do we care? They cared enough to pray for boldness. Let's bow our heads. Please.